Hey, welcome everybody. So glad that you could be back again for this episode of Blossoms and Bourbon. Um, as always, I'm so excited that you're here and you've decided to spend your time with us. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, another shout out to all of you who are following us, who are liking these videos. Um, I am just so impressed and so flattered that I'm getting pictures still of arrangements that you're trying. I had a friend call the other day and say that she was inspired by one of the videos for an event that she's planning. And she's actually using one of the design techniques that we showed to help create the uh, centerpieces for the event. So I'm super excited about that. Um, I had to roll up my sleeves today because we are going to have a lot of fun. This is going to be a great episode um, where we're going to do an Asian inspired design. Um, it is called, and I'm going to try to say this and I apologize in advance for my pronunciation, Nagire. And Nagire forms in Asian design are always built in a cylinder vase. Um, so that's why I've chosen this particular container. In typical traditional um, Asian style, there is a different mechanic. I'm using foam today because of what I want to accomplish with this design. So this is the Mark Fry take on this. Um, but yeah, they're super cool and um, it's, a, it's a lovely school of uh, floral design that's been around for a long, long time. Um, so the first thing I did is um, kind of scavenge some stuff from the yard. And Anita, thanks to your help with this, um, we got these lovely Arborvita branches. Um, they started out like this with all these little tendrils. And so what I did just because I didn't want that to be so uh, bushy and frilly and lacy is I just kind of edited out some of those. So with your clippers, just cut them away so that you have a much more open kind of feeling to the branch. So what I was left with was this branch, which I really, really like, and um, that I'm gonna use horizontally in this design. This is gonna be one of those designs that's gonna kind of push the envelope about how far out this way we can go with the arrangement. Um, and in traditional flower world, one and a half times the height of the container is kind of a typical format for the overall dimension. Um, we're going to go in the other direction today. We're going to push that one and a half times out to the side and not up. Okay, so I've got some foam in here. I have taped it down for security. Um, this green tape is very much like the green tape that I showed you in the previous episode that was clear. Um, this is also vinyl and waterproof. Super good in this application where you're using wet foam with it. Um, so I'm going to take this branch I'm gonna use this little portion of the branch to kind of insert in the foam, and that's gonna be the thing that holds it in place. I'm also gonna twist it a little bit as I put it in, because I don't want these two branches to be one over top of the other. I want there to be a little front and back activity with that. So I'm gonna do it like this, and I'm gonna go in. Yeah, and that's thankfully working just like I thought it would. All right, good. So that looks pretty secure too. If you're a little unsure about the security of something like this in your mechanics, you can always put a little piece of tape over the branch too. Um, that wouldn't hurt at all to help secure it a little bit more. Um, I think for this, it's gonna be just fine. Um, it felt pretty sturdy there. So what we're gonna do first is start with these beautiful anthurium. Um, I'm so lucky this week that we have some beautiful tropical things here at the shop to work with. Um, thankfully, to, uh, for a client that's having an event that we're working on this week, we have some uh, beautiful tropical material. So what I'm going to do is just kind of follow the line that has been established with this branch and just extend this floral material really as far out as I can. Um, and then to kind of follow the up and over sensation of the branches, I'm going to move and I'm sure that you're gonna be able to see this from the top too. You're gonna to see that these are not all lined up one over top of the other like a stack, but yet there's gonna be some front and back um, movement to the, the way that these are placed. Um, let's come back to the front for this one. So yeah, again, I'm kind of working from the front. Let me just spin that around a little bit so you can see where we're headed with that. So there's kind of like a little stair step pattern coming up with those beautiful anthurium. Um, one thing I love about the shape of the anthurium is it kind of helps pull your eye in the direction of the, the branch and helps your eye move out in the arrangement. That's uh, really super cool. All right, so next up for this, we're gonna have to do a little bit of filling here in the, in the base just to kind of cover the mechanics. This is kind of how I like for this part of the arrangement to be. And I'm gonna go back to one of my old buddies here, the green trick. 
This is, as you may remember from another episode, Dianthus. Um, it's a member of the Dianthus family. And this is actually the flower, uh, which again, is just one of those things I really love. So we're gonna keep this really tight because we don't wanna distract from what's happening out here with the movement of this arrangement. So um, this is gonna be just really a way to cover the mechanics. And we'll probably take a couple of these to do that. I am cutting the stems really short. And one thing that I'm also gonna be doing with that is covering that little place where the tape is attached. So you can see in front, you can't see the tape anymore. That little thing that was holding the foam in place. And I've kind of made this little sort of path with that uh, green trick coming across. All right. Next up, another tropical product that I just love. This leaf is called Whaleback. And I guess it gets its name from the fact that it has all these ribs in the leaf. Super cool. Um, it's just really a fun material to use just like this, um, or you can use it the way I'm gonna show you. We're gonna take the spine of this leaf and just kind of do a little snip with our clippers. And as we do that, we're just gonna pull a little bit, not pull all the way to the end, because obviously you'll go right through the end of the leaf, but just create a little V in that leaf. And one more, and we'll do that again. So now we've got this kind of desegmented leaf, as it were. And what I'm gonna do is just start working that in to also give some additional coverage to the mechanic. And literally what I'm doing is just kind of wrapping it around. But that leaf gives such amazing texture and movement to that mechanic. that we're now covering up, which is the idea. All right, so you've got all that kind of, all right, so that's one leaf that we took that started out like this, and with a few little snips, got those twisty, circular movements going on with those spirals. Totally love that. All right. Next up, visually, I don't want this to look like it's gonna be unbalanced. I don't want it to look like it's gonna to topple over or be longer on one side than the other. So we're gonna create that focal point that we've talked about uh, before too. And today I'm gonna to use Gerber's for that. And these of course are pink, because if you hadn't picked up on that, that's kind of the color palette of choice today. Again, really, really short stems so that they're tucked in low. And in some cases, you can probably hear that. Can you hear that little crunching noise? That's actually the stem of the Gerber going through this leaf. Totally fine. As long as it can get down to the water source, that's all that matters. All right, I'm gonna trim that one more time. All right. So now I have the focal point in place with those Gerbers that are creating that nice kind of area of interest right in the front. And visually, it's already starting to create some weight here. So it counterbalances the weight that you feel with the anthuriums that move off the end. All right. One more thing to do for this, and then we're gonna be finished. This is a very quick and simple arrangement that um, I love because it has very little product, but high impact. Um, and so where did I put those leaves? Jason, where did I put those leaves? <laughs> Here they are. <laughs> All right, so this, another great foliage called Hala. And this hala foliage, um, actually all these products were flown in from Hawaii uh, for this event we're doing. And um, I, I love this. I just love how structural, how architectural this is. It has this pretty rigid spine in here. Um, the spine is not really gonna work very well for what I wanna use it for. So what we're gonna do is just take the design knife 
We're just gonna run right along the edge of the spine and run down the length of the leaf. Okay. So what we've got is still something that's very beautiful, something that's still very structural, but because it doesn't have that spine, it's a little bit easier to work with, okay? So we're gonna cut a sharp point on the end. And then, I'm gonna look for a space in here. We're gonna tuck that in. And then what I'm gonna do with this is come out here and pull it and bend it. So now what we've done is create this beautiful sharp angle with that foliage, which is so cool. Again, it helps follow the line. It makes that very dramatic and kind of pulls your eye over to the side. Um, really, really beautiful. All right, let's do the other half of the hollow the same way. I've always wondered if there's something that we could do with these spines after we cut them off. I have no idea, I'm sure there probably is, but. Again, we're gonna get kind of a sharp point on the end, so it'll go into the foam. All right, so I'm coming a little more up to the front of this time. Let me spin that around so you can see that. See the positioning of this one compared to the position of this one? So this one's a little more forward, uh, which is exactly what I want, because this time when I bend this, and I'll do it from back here, I want it to cross over the other one. I want the angles to be very similar here, but I also kind of want that overlap so that as it goes out, there's that visual interest with that. Um, now, we have one other place right here that I can see foam. That's a no-no. We shouldn't be having that. So let's go back to our buddy trick. Let's see if we can't get that covered up. There we go. All right. So what do you think? This is one of my favorite ways to design. Um, I love Asian influence design just because it is so simple. It's very clean. Um, I think it's very elegant. I do love the movement about it so that as you're looking at the design, your eye begins to kind of flow through it. So you can follow the path of the hollow foliage down to the anthurium. You kind of follow the path of the anthurium back to the Gerber, back to the hollow and through again. So your eye just begins to move all through the piece, um, which is again, part of what I love. Um, it's a super cool way to use found things too, like this branch. That's something that's featured very, very often in um, Asian inspired design is very, very natural elements. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed that. Um, and know that I do, it's just been so much fun. But in Blossoms and Bourbon world, the next step is always, what Jason? The bourbon, absolutely. <laughs> so today, uh, I am actually tasting a new bourbon. This is called Uncle Nearest. Um, Uncle Nearest is actually a Tennessee whiskey. Uh, so briefly, let's talk about what the difference is between a whiskey and a bourbon. Um, bourbon has to have in its mash bill 51% or more corn. And the mash bill is simply the recipe. That's what is used to make the bourbon. So this has, I believe it's 90% combination of corn and rye together. So that means it doesn't meet the criteria to be a bourbon. That's why it's called a whiskey. Um, it is manufactured or distilled and bottled in Tennessee. Um, there are some people that think that only bourbon is, or bourbon is the, it can only be called bourbon if it's made in Kentucky. Uh, that's not true, but um, this actually has, does happen to be made in Tennessee. 
Um, Uncle Nearest is named for a gentleman named Nathan Green. And Nathan Green um, is the one who first distilled this. He is acknowledged as the first African-American master distiller that we have on record. Uh, reportedly, he also is the person who taught Jack Daniels about distillery. Um, so it's kind of a cool throwback to him. There is actually, I think, one of his granddaughters now, or great-granddaughter, who actually is part of the company. Um, so that's, that's kind of cool. Um, it is a little bit lighter in color, um, as you can tell from just looking at it here in the bottle. But um, let's have a pour and see what happens. One for you, sir. All right. Oh yeah, this is nice. Um, it's just a tiny bit sort of like, like hay, like earthy almost. Um, and there's a little bit of like a maple or something. So there's a little sweetness to it. That's very good. It does start out sweet, and then it has a little kick in of some spice. Um, and honestly, part of that spice comes from the fact that there's a heavy concentration of rye. Um, rye is known for being a little bit spicier um, in, in bourbon and whiskey drinks. So that, that's gonna lead it to be a little bit spicier. And, and some people don't care for that, but. It's interesting, it kind of hits like in the middle of your mouth, kind of floats across your tongue. Um, that's where the sweet kind of happens. Then as you swallow it, you start to get a little bit of that spiciness, a little bit of that heat, almost like a little cinnamony note or something that's got kind of that um, heat to it. Anyway, a good one. And I'm so glad that we were able to try Uncle Nearest today. This is the Uncle Nearest small batch. Um, they do make a um, a, one that is a heavy rye, uh, so it has even more rye in the mash bill. And there are a couple of other ones, I think. Um, it's a pretty high proof. This is an 88 proof, and um, I know that they have 100 proof as well. So um, something for every taste, I believe. Um, you guys, this has been awesome. I am so glad that you decided to join us again. Um, this will close out this edition of Blossoms and Bourbon. You know what to do like the video, please subscribe to the video so you'll get notified the next time that we get together. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks so much. Take care.